And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, we are going to be making one of my favorite things, and that is stuffed pepper soup. To go alongside that, we're going to have a salad with a warm bacon vinaigrette over it. And then for dessert, we're going to make an oatmeal square. So we're going to start with dessert because they need to bake. Now, in this pan, if you have an 8x8 pan or something like a 4x8 is fine, I have one of those blocks of cookie dough. Now, if you can find the rolled oatmeal cookie dough, you only need half. But I just found in my store the, uh, the little individual, you know how you can break those apart and bake them. This one has oatmeal, cranberry, and walnut. So I thought, yum, that'll be delicious. So use either one you want. I'm using the, the one with the dried cranberries in it because I happen to adore dried cranberries. Spray your pan with non-stick spray. I like for baking. I like the one that has the flour in it. And then just do what I'm doing. Press the bottom of the pan with the cookie dough. That's all there is to it. Ready-made base for your cookies. This is so easy. This is something your kids would love to do. Just press that in the bottom of your pan, just like that. Very easy. Now, this one, again, has the dried cranberries and the walnuts in it, or you can use just the plain oatmeal cookie dough. Now, in this bowl, I have a cup and a half of powdered sugar. To that, I'm going to add about a cup or so, you don't have to measure it exact, of crunchy peanut butter. You could use smooth. If the peanuts bother you and you don't want to use peanuts, uh, the crunchy, you could do smooth peanut butter would be fine. You could also do the peanut butter that has the honey in it would be delicious in this. You could add a little bit of the um, hazelnut spread if you wanted to, but today we're just going to do plain crunchy peanut butter which I happen to love, and about a teaspoon of vanilla. You want to take your mixer and mix these two things together until they're completely incorporated. The cookie dough, if you can let it sit out at room temperature to kind of come to a, a softer consistency, it spreads a little better. Or you could make your own homemade cookie dough if you wanted to with oatmeal cookies. You could substitute sugar cookie dough or chocolate chip cookie dough would be delicious. Although that might be a little rich because we are gonna add some chocolate chips eventually. But you could use chocolate chip cookie dough. Use your imagination. I saw in the store they make a macadamia nut cookie dough would be delicious. Oh, any kind of a base that you like, but I like the oatmeal. That's it. Now, it's a little crumbly, but that's okay because we're gonna just put this mixture over top of our prepared cookie dough and spread it out with a spoon. And that's all there is to it. And you're gonna bake that. Kinda of take your little spatula or your hands if you want to. Press it out. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees. If you're doing a bake sale or something like that, this is a wonderful, Easy, easy recipe to do, and it makes a delicious little cookie bar. There you go. Now, this just needs to bake for about 25 minutes in a preheated 350-degree oven, and then I'll show you how to top the topping of it with the chocolate chips. Now, our cookie dough base is in the oven, and we're going to get started on our soup. Now, I have an 8-quart stock pot here on my stove with about a pound of lean ground beef that I'm going to brown and that's going to be the basis of our soup. Now I love stuffed peppers but sometimes I don't have time to make the peppers, stuff them and then let them bake forever but I still want that flavor in my mouth. I love stuffed peppers so I thought why not make a soup that you make that tastes like a stuffed pepper. So if you like stuffed peppers this is the soup for you. 
Now we've got green peppers, obviously. Stuffed pepper soup has green peppers in it. You want about, I don't know, three or four green peppers, depending on the size of your pepper. You want to cut them in half and take out the seeds and the little membrane there that's with the peppers. And you're going to cut them up. You're going to dice them up sort of fine, uh, you know, medium to fine. It's going into soup, so it doesn't have to be perfect. You could dice them, chop them up in a food processor if you wanted to. There's so many of them. You could absolutely just use a food processor and save yourself some time. Stuff, my stuffed peppers, I've seen them with all kinds of stuff, have rice and ground beef stuffed in the pepper with an egg and some salt and pepper, and then I use a tomato sauce over top. Some people put cheese on top of their stuffed peppers. Now, I don't in mine, and there's not any cheese in this soup, but by all means, if you like cheddar cheese or something like that on top of your stuffed pepper, you could top your soup bowl with whatever you wanted. You could put some sour cream or cheese or anything like that. But you want to get all the flavors of the stuffed pepper. I make a, a cabbage soup too based on my favorite dish, which is stuffed cabbage, but sometimes that's a, I don't have time to make stuffed cabbage because that takes a while. But I make that soup and it just, oh, so good. One of these days I'm going to have to make stuffed cabbage with you. That's my all-time favorite dish of all to eat. But today we're going to make the stuffed pepper soup. So we're going to just dice up these peppers. You want about a cup, cup and a half total. And it depends. You know, sometimes you go to the store and they've got huge peppers. And you might only need two. So you really aim for about a cup or a cup and a half of your peppers. Because that really is a, a main component flavor. And then you want one medium to large onion that you're going to dice up and put in there and brown with your ground beef. These peppers are beautiful. I love green peppers. You could use red pepper if you wanted to, but you really kind of, I, I like the flavor of the green pepper in this soup. But if you wanted to mix it to make it pretty, you could use half red and half green. Whatever you like. Let's do one more because really I want a lot of green pepper in this soup. In the summertime when peppers are in season, and you can get them very inexpensively, you can make this soup and freeze it if you wanted to in individual little containers. I do that a lot with soup. I'll make a big pot, go ahead and make the full recipe, and then if there's leftovers, I, I get those little individual size containers, freezer containers, leave about a half inch to an inch of headspace at the top so it can expand and freeze it. And then when you want a bowl of soup and you don't really want to make a pot of soup, get it out and heat it and it's delicious. And this soup freezes beautifully. Stuffed peppers freeze beautifully. I do that a lot in the summertime when the garden is full of peppers. I'll go ahead and make up my stuffed peppers and not cook them and then freeze them. And then in the wintertime when I want them, I've got them ready to go and you can put them in your crock pot. This is another soup that you, by all means, could put in your crock pot early in, a, in the morning. I, if you're not using very lean ground beef, then you would want to drain the ground beef, but put it all in your um, crock pot in the morning and put it on low and it would be ready when you get home. So you could do this one in the crock pot too. I'm gonna take a quick break. I'm just gonna brown up this ground beef and add my peppers to it and I'll be back in just a minute and then we'll add the rest of the ingredients to our wonderful soup. I'll be right back. Now we added our beef and our peppers in there and it's browned up. We're going to add a little bit of salt and pepper, about a half a teaspoon or so of black pepper and about a teaspoon of salt. I use kosher salt. You can use uh, regular salt if you want or sea salt. I just happen to like to cook with regular kosher salt. Mmm, so good. Now, we're going to add an onion. There's one piece of pepper there. One, this is a pretty good size onion. We're going to add one. 
Just dice it in about the same size pieces that your green peppers in. And add it to your soup. And then we're going to add some tomatoes and some stock. Delicious. I get asked a lot via email or people write me wanting to know about this little tool right here. This is a bench scraper. I have had this for years. I've had it for so long, but I'm seeing them everywhere now. So you can get these in any store that sells, or pretty much any store that sells baking dishes. This is um, called a bench scraper, but it's a wonderful tool when you chop to lift up your vegetables and put into your dish. It's a great little tool to have in your kitchen. Now, to that, we're gonna add one 14 ounce can of, I like the fire roasted diced tomatoes, but if you don't have the fire roasted and you just have regular tomatoes, that's fine. And then either two small 14 ounce cans or one 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. And if you have your own homemade canned tomatoes, you would probably want about two quarts which would be delicious in this soup. I can tomatoes every year. I can about two bushel of tomatoes. You've seen me do that with my mom. Love home canned tomatoes. To that, we're gonna add one can of chicken broth and some beef broth, and that's pretty much it except for the rice, which we're not gonna add right yet because this needs to simmer. About 28 ounces or so of beef broth. I like to mix the chicken with the beef because I think it just tastes a little less beefy and, and just the chicken broth adds a different component of flavor to it and it's really good. I like the mixture of the two. Remember, this is a soup. It's not a stew, it's a soup, so it should be thinner like that with the broth. If you need to add more, you can add more broth or maybe even a little bit of water would be fine. Turn your temperature down to low, put your lid on, and in the meantime, I like to cook separately, and I've already got it cooked, two cups of rice. Now, the reason that I cook the rice separately, rice and pasta are two things that if you cook it in the broth of the soup, it really soaks up that broth and your soup will become too thick. So anytime that in my recipes, if you, uh, not 100% of the time, probably 90% of the time, I cook my macaroni or my spaghetti or whatever I'm doing in a separate pot and then add it to the final product already cooked. So that's what I've done with the rice. I just bought the boil in the bag, white rice in one bag or two cups of rice is what you want for that. Now, we are going to serve alongside our dishes a salad with a warm bacon vinaigrette. It has some bacon and some uh, a lemon and some uh, vinegar. I use rice vinegar. Mine, you could use apple cider. So we're going to get started on that. Now, I have some bacon here. And remember, on the wooden cutting boards, I never use my wooden boards for meat. I keep these little plastic boards solely to use when I'm using raw meats on my boards because I don't want to touch that with the raw meat. That's a great little thing to have. Find them anywhere and then you just put them in your dishwasher and they're clean. You want about three or four slices of, I like thick cut bacon for this, but if you don't have thick cut bacon, you can use regular thin cut bacon. You can use turkey bacon. Now it will not be the same flavor exactly as the regular bacon, but if you want to use turkey bacon, you sure can. And then I go ahead and cut up my bacon into little pieces before I cook it because then it's easier because this dressing is, you're going to be using the drippings from the bacon, at least part of them, in the final dressing of the salad. But the first thing you need to do, obviously, is to render the bacon. So we're going to cook this bacon and then take it out of the pan but leave the drippings in there. So I'm going to take a quick break. All I'm going to do is crisp up this bacon and when I come back I'll show you how to finish the dressing and finish up our bars and then we get to eat. I'll be back in just a minute.
right, now our cookie dough base has been baking for about 25 minutes. I took it out of the oven. I've got the bacon in the skillet and it's gonna start browning up. Now we need to finish off the bar. I have about half a cup or so of just little mini chocolate chips. So if you don't have the little mini ones, you can use regular chocolate chips. You could put butterscotch chips if you wanted to. Uh, white, you could make a mixture of white chocolate and the, the milk chocolate or semi-sweet chocolate. You could use bittersweet chocolate. You can use dark chocolate. You can use whatever kind of chocolate chip that you like best. You want to sprinkle those over top and then we're going to put them back in the oven for about 10 more minutes and then it needs to cool completely and then you can cut it into bars. But this is absolutely scrumptious. And this recipe, you really can change it up and use any kind of a base of cookie dough that you want. I'm using the oatmeal with the dried cranberries and walnuts in it. If you wanted to sprinkle some additional walnuts on top, you could. And in the middle layer, I mix the powdered sugar with crunchy peanut butter and a little bit of vanilla. And then over top, I've got these chocolate chips and I'm just gonna put this back in the oven to let it bake for about 10 more minutes and our bacon is just gonna start rendering out its fat. I'm gonna take a quick break, get this back in the oven, and then when I come back, we'll finish up our salad, finish up our soup, and our bars will be done. I'll be back in just a minute. Hey, and welcome back. Now, our bacon is cooking in the skillet. We're gonna add our rice to our soup, about two cups, or if you're using the boil in the bag like I am, one bag is, is fine. And just go ahead and cook it, and then add it to your soup, and stir it in, and look at that soup, how good that looks. And my pot is full, mm. But that is your stuffed pepper soup, and that's pretty much done and it looks and smells delicious, and just let that simmer. And again, if you wanted to do it in your crock pot, you can just go ahead and put it in your crock pot in the morning and let it go on low, and then you've got dinner ready when you get home with your day, from your day, work or wherever you go. Now our bacon is cooking. Let's let that crisp up for just a minute more, and we'll get started on this salad. Now I like spinach. Traditionally, to me, bacon dressing needs spinach. But if you don't want some spinach, if you want to use any kind of a, um, a green that you like, is fine. But I just like the baby spinach in this. And I try to always buy organic leaves, spinach, and, or salad greens, if you can find the organic, because they just seem to me to be a little healthier, and I think they taste a little better. But any kind of salad green that you like, I'm just choosing the baby spinach. And this makes about six salads, but I'm just gonna make up one for you today. Now, to that, I wanna add some blue cheese crumbles. Just a few little blue cheese crumbles over top. Some walnuts. Walnuts are one of the healthiest things that you can eat. Full of antioxidants and good for you oils and just delicious and very heart healthy. Some walnuts. I like a little bit of an apple. So I brought an apple. I'm not gonna put it on there today, but if you want to dice up a Granny Smith apple or any kind of apple that you like and put on there, you can do that too. Or pear would be delicious on that. And just set that aside while we finish our bacon, get the dressing going. We put our chocolate bars back in the oven. They need about 10 minutes with those chocolate chips on top. You could add some coconut to that too, would be delicious. I'm giving you some other ideas uh, for the bars. Really, it's, it's a method and you can mix it up any way you like. Now, take your bacon out of the drippings and put it in a bowl or on a plate or something with some paper toweling. Let's be careful with that grease, it's very hot, but that's the basis of your dressing. This is not something you would wanna eat every day because you are gonna eat the bacon drippings. If you want to use turkey bacon, you can. 
However, you will need to add some olive oil to the pan to cook the turkey bacon because it is very, very lean. Now, turn your eye on low because you're gonna be adding some things to this. And anytime you add an acid, in this case, we're gonna use vinegar and lemon juice, it's gonna bubble up like crazy. So be very careful. Sometimes I even go ahead and take it off the heat. I'm adding rice vinegar. If you wanna add apple cider vinegar, you can. About two, maybe three tablespoons of the, the vinegar, the acid. I'm gonna add a little bit of, see how it's sort of bubbling up? Add a little bit of pepper to that. A pinch of sugar, about a half of a teaspoon or so of sugar, and then some olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. This is where you wanna use olive oil. This is a lot of dressing because it's gonna go over a lot of salads. And then just whisk that together. Oh, it smells so good. Whisk all that together, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon juice to mine. Have you ever heard the old Southern term? A lot of women, my mom included, has always said they're gonna use kilt lettuce or killed lettuce, fresh lettuce from the garden at the beginning of the year when guard, the lettuce first comes up. This dressing is fabulous over that with some little green onions. This is the juice of one, on, of one onion, one lemon. Catch the seeds, you don't want to put the seeds in there. I do this over a little strainer. If I had a little bowl, I would use my little reamer, but I don't have a little bowl, so I'm just gonna squeeze it. Wanna add a little bit of your lemon juice. Just kinda add something else to it. A little bit of salt, about half a teaspoon of salt. We've already added some pepper. And that's it for your dressing. You wanna keep that warm. Let that sugar dissolve, and then we will put our bacon back in our dressing. And this is a warm dressing that we're gonna put over our spinach. And again, if you wanna put it over your lettuce, your fresh lettuce from the garden in the spring, this would be a fabulous dressing for that old-fashioned kilt lettuce. That's a sweet bacon dressing. Mm. Have you ever had that? It's so good. To me, that's the first sign of spring. And then add your bacon back in. And that is a warm bacon dressing that I happen to love. And I'm putting mine over my spinach. Now our bars are done, our chocolate is softened, and all I'm doing, because we didn't add any cream or anything like that to make a ganache, I'm taking a, a butter knife, or if you have a little offset spatula, that works, and I'm just spreading out the melted chocolate bars. Now this, or the chocolate over the bars, this needs to cool, oh, a good hour before you're ready to cut it into bars, and this will make about 16 bars or so, because it's very rich. You don't want a big piece of that. But there's your wonderful little chocolate uh, oatmeal bars. And if you want to add some walnuts on top, I would, because I like that extra little bit of crunch, and walnuts are very healthy for you. Just add some walnuts or maybe a little coconut would be delicious on there. Some shaved white chocolate would be good over that. Uh, anything like that, some caramel drizzled over you could do any number of things, but there you go. There's a wonderful little bar for you, and your children are going to love this. Now, our dressing is done. Our salad is ready to be dressed. Don't dress it till right before you're ready to serve, because what this warm dressing is going to do is wilt that spinach. Let me get a little more in there. It's going to wilt the spinach just a touch. And then I would sprinkle over top of this a little bit of freshly cracked pepper over top of our wonderful little salad. And again, if you like, and I do like, sometimes I like to just slice a little bit of an apple and put over top of that. It's really good in there. And then our soup. Let's not forget our delicious stuffed pepper soup. Look at this beautiful pot of soup. And you can just serve this right up. Oh, on a cold, wintry day with some cornbread, it could be just delicious. Or some soup crackers, whatever you like. Oh, you can 
could top that with a little bit of cheddar cheese if you wanted to, or not. I probably wouldn't, but some people like cheese on top of their soup or a little sour cream on top of that would be delicious. But here are three very easy recipes that you can do any day of the week, any night. You know, you could cook this for your family. It's ready in no time, and your family will love it. Try these recipes, download them, and let me know what you think about them. And I will see you next time on Everyday Man. Thank you for watching Everyday Mana with Lisa. This program is made possible by viewers like you. Your support is continually needed to keep Christian programming on the air. Please send your best financial gift to Living Faith Television in care of Everyday Mana. 